welcome back to Olivia's Grad Life where I share my life as a media psychology graduate student. So I am so happy today, I am finally going to share with you some media effects research. And as you can tell from the title of this video, I'm gonna be talking about Finspiration posts on Instagram and if they're actually inspirational or not. Now before we start, I need to make a couple of things clear. One, this is not like Penn State University saying anything like, yes, that's the school I go to, but this is like me saying stuff, so if I mess up, it's a reflection on me. And two, I'm not gonna be making any specific claims in this video. I'm more so just gonna present to you the research on this topic. And then also make sure you stick around to the end because I am gonna be talking about some of the newer research, like 2017, 2018 research on body appreciation, body positivity, self-compassion, all this kind of new stuff that we're seeing on Instagram and with these Finsta, not Finsta, Fitspiration <laughs> influencers and how that plays a role in body image and body image satisfaction. So before we actually start talking specifically about Fitspiration, I need to tell you about something called Social Comparison Theory by Festinger. So this theory basically says in order to accurately assess our skills and make judgments about ourselves, we compare to similar others in our environment. So one example might be, okay, compared to my friends, I've never been in a car accident, but three of my friends have been. So based on that, I'm gonna say I am a safe driver. That's an example of social comparison in order to make a judgment of my skills. Now there are two types of social comparison. There's upward social comparison and downward social comparison. So in upward social comparison, you look at someone who's better at you than something. And in downward social um, comparison, you look at someone who is worse than you at something. And usually the downward social comparison makes you feel better. So for example, um, I used to be a cheerleader for my university, so for UC Davis. When I was tumbling, I was one of the best tumblers on our cheer squad. So when I would look at the other cheerleaders tumbling, that would be a downward social comparison. I felt pretty good about myself. I felt like I was a really good tumbler. But then when I looked on the other side of the gym and saw gymnastics club practicing, I realized compared to all of them, I'm kind of at the bottom of the totem pole in terms of tumbling. So when I looked to them, that was more of a put me in my place. I'm not as good as I thought I was. Now, as you can see, upward social comparison, there's really two things that can happen from it. So one can be, wow, I'm inspired by them. Okay, I'm gonna look at how she goes into her tumbling passes and adopt that for myself so I can get better and attainable and you wanna become like that person. But then there's also, dang, they're so good. I suck compared to them. I'm never gonna be as good as them. I feel terrible about myself now. You can see how this happens definitely in a mediated context. So by mediated, I mean on a screen, basically through television, movies, social media. To put this in a Fitspiration context. So if you guys don't know what Fitspiration is, I'm, I'll put some examples here on the screen. Another kind of, not quite theory, but concept I want to talk about really quickly as well is the internalization of the thin ideal. So as you've probably noticed on TV and media, and I do feel like it's getting better, but even so, especially when you look like mid 2000s movies, Everyone has the same exact body type. They're all very thin, they look a certain way, most of them are underweight, same with models and magazines, all of that. So that's called the thin ideal, where media is basically portraying that the ideal body image, that the way that most of the people in this world look, is how these models look on TV. And so as viewers, we take that in, we internalize that thin ideal, and basically think, okay, yeah, that's how I should look, that's how everybody should look, that is how everybody looks, blah, blah, blah. So you can see how that could cause you to like not feel great. Now with this Fitspiration stuff, there has been talk of the fit ideal and the internalization of the fit ideal. So I feel like in the past couple years, rather than it being I wanna be super skinny, it's I wanna be toned. And so just like with the thin ideal, you can see how that could cause some problems as well. So let's look at some research that has tapped into the fit ideal, thin ideal, how this affects people. Basically the overarching findings is looking at Fitspiration Media makes you feel really bad about yourself. Okay, let's think, but there are some posts where 
maybe it is a model and a swimsuit, whatever, but they post a really inspiring caption or they tell you their story about XYZ, does that make a difference? So there's a research study by Pritchard, Lavis, and Higgeman, and they actually tested to see if different types of Fitspiration posts, so their two were like appearance focused, so like posing in the mirror versus functional, so maybe they're running on the treadmill or holding a weight, if that combined with different types of captions. So they had like the no excuse caption, um, appearance based captions, relationship between fitness and thinness captions, as well as captions with a focus on looking good. They saw if any of that changed how people felt and no, people either didn't look at the caption or it didn't make a difference or it just contributed to the dissatisfaction. So everyone still felt dissatisfied no matter what the caption was or what kind of pose it was. All right, moving on. Now we're gonna talk more about Photoshop, especially models on the covers of magazines. So I don't know if you guys remember a couple years ago, but Jennifer Lawrence was on the cover of some magazine and it was shown like the before and after of when she wasn't photoshopped where she looked good but then she was photoshopped and she looked completely different so bissell in 2006 looked to see if actually telling people hey this photo is digitally altered if that helped them if that helped protect them against the thin ideal so basically the idea is when you look at a photoshopped image like you see jennifer lawrence on the cover you're like Oh my gosh, she looks amazing. Even she looks that good. Like, so I should look that good too. Um, and therefore you're gonna like feel worse about yourself. So they wanted to see if you explicitly say, hey, this is Photoshop, this isn't real, how you feel afterwards. So surprisingly, Bissell actually found that those who had little disclaimer, hey, this is Photoshop, wanted to look like the model even more than those in the other conditions where it was Photoshop, but they weren't told it was Photoshop. So her dissatisfaction was the same across conditions. So people who saw a Photoshopped image that didn't, any, that didn't say anything, they felt bad. People who saw the disclaimer, they felt the same amount of like badness as well, but they wanted to look like it more, which doesn't make sense, right? Like we're telling you, this is not realistic. This is not real yet they wanted to look like them even more. So part of what this study was trying to test is if by telling people this, they would process it in a different way and prevent from doing that upward social comparison where they would go, wow, she looks amazing, I look horrible. And it didn't. All right, so after these studies, there was one by Hallowell and Harcourt that tested to see if a short video literacy message could help prevent this comparison that happens when you then see a thin model. So what they did is they showed them a minute and 30 second video from a Dove campaign that actually showed someone taking a picture of a model and then showed like the screen recording of the computer of someone actually photoshopping the model. I'm gonna link it down below because it's really, really interesting. They showed middle school girls in England this video and then showed them thin ideal images and seeing that video literacy message actually protected them from getting that negative body dissatisfaction that usually happens when you view those types of images. So what's very interesting is the media literacy of just saying a statement, this photo is photoshopped, doesn't help, but actually seeing the video of it does help. A couple years later, there was a study by McLean, Paxton, and Wertheim. And I'm sorry, I'm like reading like the names off because I, I don't wanna mess it up. But basically they did a study and um, a couple years after the Hallowell and Harcourt study and they found that yeah, media literacy makes a difference and that that does buffer against feeling bad after seeing a thin ideal image. It prevents you from doing that upward social comparison that makes you feel bad about yourself. So now where we're at with the research, like, present day, and I'm gonna talk about more stuff in a minute, but present day, what counts as video literacy or media literacy? Like how can we get people to be media literate? Because clearly just telling them doesn't make a difference. It actually makes them want to look like this, this unrealistic expectation, like they wanna look like that even more. But this video does protect people. So now we're kind of like, okay, what is gonna get people media literate to protect them against the harmful effects that the thin ideal, which is still all over all types of media, you know, how do we prevent against getting negative body satisfaction? So if at this point you're thinking like, wow, every time I look at media, I'm gonna feel like bad about myself. What the heck? Like there's, there's a lot of hope. Don't, 
don't be that the message you take away. So there was one study by Owen and Spencer that actually showed that after participants viewed healthy weight models, their ideal body image increased in BMI. So that's a good thing, right? So before they think that this really thin model is the ideal, but then when they actually saw people that were healthy weight in the media, that ideal increased. So to a normal body size. So what does that tell you? Um, again, I'm not making any claims, but it's probably a good idea to have normal weight people in TV shows as airy models, as clothing models in Target and etc. And those are like you know, a couple companies that are doing this and showing normal sized people <laughs> wearing their clothes and using those products because it actually does help with that messed up twisted ideal that we have in our heads. So healthy models, good thing. So now I want to get into some 2017, 2018 research about the roles of body appreciation, self-compassion, and body positivity in the role of this whole Fitspiration thing and how we are affected by it. There are a couple of research studies recently that do show that self-compassion and body appreciation protect you from the negative effects of the thin ideal. So I'm going to read you a little bit about what body positivity is and how this can help protect against the thin ideal. So um, this is again from Tilka and Wood Barklow. They define body positivity as an overarching love and respect for the body that includes an appreciation of one's body for more than its physical appearance and the processing of body related information through a positive lens. So basically the positive characteristics of the message are remembered, whereas any negative messages, something that's gonna harm like your body image, your self-concept are just completely disregarded. The opposite of body dissatisfaction is not body positivity. In fact, there's a researcher who said in a paper, if a therapist helps someone to get rid of those like body dissatisfaction thoughts and feelings and attitudes, but doesn't then work on the positive side, that's not helpful. Like the absence of body dissatisfaction is not necessarily body positivity. As a consumer of media, it also means that we can't simply just stop hating on our bodies. We also need to start appreciating them and having compassion for our bodies and ourselves and realizing that nobody is perfect. And beauty has a very, very broad definition, not just the idealized images that we see in our media. I keep pointing over here because that's where my TV is, by the way. So I'm really curious to hear what you guys have to say about this. If you have any experiences with following certain accounts that either made you feel better or feel worse, or if you've noticed this, that we tend to do this comparison between ourselves and other people's every single day, in our daily life. So I'm really interested to hear your thoughts about this. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. So anyway, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Keep dreaming out loud and I will see you guys next time. Bye.